So in this video, we are going to learn about all the settings of Go charting. So here we have this setting option and now we have all these kind of settings. So we will explore all these settings one by one. So let me start with the chart settings. So this option is about setting the background of the chart. So here we have linear and the gradient. So suppose you want to set the background of your chart in the gradient form. You can click here, you can select any color and now you can see the colors are being changed into gradient. You can also set the transparency of this color from this slider. Then you can switch on the watermark here. You can also load the skins, suppose like the dragon or the nebula. You can also load the skin from your computer from here. Now this option is about the crosshair color. So from this, you can set the crosshair color. Say for example, I want to set the crosshair color into this navy blue. So you can see the color is navy blue here. Then if you want to enable the price line, we can enable it or disable it. So this is the price line you can see. Sometimes you are not able to see this price properly. So you need to change the colors from here. Now you can also enable the daybreak from this option. Then you can have the grid lines on your chart, X grid or Y grid. Now let's go to the axis settings. So here the time zone settings can be either local UTC or source. It is the good practice to keep it as source. Now X axis can be shifted to either top or it can be shifted to the bottom. Then we have these axis domains. So these are the color of the lines. So you can change, suppose it is black. Now you can change it into blue or into the red. So this can be done. Now this is the setting about the axis ticks. So what is the ticks? Do not confuse the tick size from this order flow tick manager. So here the tick size means the small dash which is in front of this price. So if I make the tick size as 40, you can see these lines have increased. So let's keep it to four. And then padding is related to the space between these lines and the price. So I keep it 30 and the space has been changed. So let's keep it three. You can also lock the aspect ratio from this button. Now let's go to the coordinate settings. So here you can see bid and ask on the edges of Y axis. So if you enable it, you can see the bid ask value. Then you can configure your coordinates from here. You can change the colors from these options. Now here from this option, you can see the clock. You can see this clock over here and you can also enable the bar countdown on the X axis or the Y axis. The same option can also be done by simply right clicking on the X axis or to the Y axis. So here we can see this bar countdown option. Now the coordinate arrow point, this is the setting here. So suppose I keep it zero. Now you see here this from 80, there is no pointing or in the price line. Now if I keep it 10, you can see this pointing has increased. So the same case is for the DY. And now the padding, it is for same. So I explained in the previous axis one. So suppose I keep the padding as 20. So you see the padding has increased the space. Now let's talk about the legend settings. So here first setting is navigation settings. So from the navigation setting, we can see there are three options. We can make it always show, we can show on hard or we can always invisible. So if I make it to always show, so you can see these navigation buttons are always on. If I make it show on hover, so if I hover over here, it will be showing. And if I make it always invisible, this will not be able to reflect on the chart. So let me keep it on show on hover. The same thing is for the pain button. So what are the pain buttons? Pain buttons are these buttons. You can see these are the pain buttons. So you can shift pain from these buttons. Okay. Or you can also expand these pain buttons. Okay. Or you can close this. Now these are the options. Let me show you one by one. So this is the chart type. So what is the chart type? The chart type is candlestick as of now. So if I switch it off, the chart type will be disappeared. These are the OHLC's values. So here we can see the OHLC value. The indicator title is here RSI and the volume. So if I switch it off, the indicator title will go. The indicator argument is same. We can see here the close 20. All these are the indicator arguments and this is the indicator value. So you can see these values getting disappeared. Now let's go to the events. So from here, you can switch it on to show the earning dates. The insider trading is for US market. So friends, what happens? Suppose you are working in a company and you are owning the share of that company. 
now you are in a better position to take decision on the buy and sell of that company share because you have more information about that company than someone else who is outside the company so people who are working in the same company they are not allowed to trade those shares in the market so what happens in us when the important information of the company is made public so those employees who are owning the share of the company they are given a window period to trade those shares so that they do not get any advantage of the information they have because of they are working in the same company from this option you can switch on to show the dividends the splits can be shown from this option and this will show the economic events now let's talk about the order flow settings so this setting has been explained multiple times you can check again the primer series video regarding this setting here you can switch it in auto mode or you can put a value here for the block size then you can format volume so suppose you are putting some value over here suppose you are putting 10 here so entire value will be divided by 10 so you can put a value based on the lot size or based on your liking so that these numbers can be read easily then we do have power trade scanner so in case of power trade scanner you need to be careful in filling these values suppose you are having the 1 minute chart and here you can see the average volume in 1 minute you are getting somewhere like 2.5 to 2.1 etc so this is the average volume you are getting okay now so this is the volume you are getting in the 60 seconds so what should be the volume in the 5 second so you should keep a value above the average so that whenever that above average volume value is crossed you will get a power trade scanner options like this so here i have kept a small value so that i can show you the signal of the power trades you should put a value which is above the average at that point of time you will get a signal of the power trade so let's go to the session settings so we have these four kind of sessions one is cme then we have us stocks then we have mcx and third is crypto and forex so if we select a session for example we have selected the cme so these are the name of those sessions under the cme group trading so the session names are overnight sessions and the regular trading hour and the timing is also mentioned so if you apply the session the market profile will split according to these sessions and also if you switch on the shading it will also shade those sessions so for example let me add the market profile here let me put the chart into the 30 minute and let me add the market profile so this is the market profile now if i have applied the cme sessions so this is what i am seeing for the market profile if i apply for the no sessions so this is the market profile i am getting again i am applying for the cme so the market profile will be split automatically now if i do the session shadings i will see the shadings of the sessions according to this cme trading hours now let's go to the books options so in the books option we have here this books so in the books you are getting all these trades and the limit orders over here live pending limit orders over here so this is the setting for the order book you can enable the bar option and you can also enable the cumulative mode right we have separated books from the depth of market so here we have a separate depth of market and this is a super cool depth of market i have made a separate video for the depth of market please visit our youtube channel to watch this video so here you have various options like show trades you can also see the volume profile visual range and you can also see your orders from here So basically from this depth of market you can place directly order of buy and sell from the options this is related to the option chain setting we have explained about this option in the option made easy series please go to our playlist and see the options made easy series where we have explained about these options this is a part of options desk friend so i'm not explaining it here now related to the trade settings so first option is show executions so suppose i am buying this market price and i bought this now see we can see there is a execution so this is called the show execution if i switch it off this will go so accordingly we have options like beep we can see our positions we can see our open orders we can see the notification so all these are self explanatory options 
Now let me tell you about this enable quick trade mode. So right now the quick trade mode is off and now if I'm going to buy or sell, suppose I'm buying by right clicking, so I can buy the market and this trading panel will open, right? Now if I enable the quick trade mode and if I right click over here and buy market, you see the order has been placed and if I show you the executions, now this is showing bot two co-charting, right? So the trading panel has not opened. So this is called the quick trade mode. So by this option, you can directly place your order by right clicking. Now, what are these two options? So first, this, this is the default size. So you can set the default size for your script. Now, what is this trigger spread? So friends, let me show you the trading panel. So in the trading panel, suppose you are placing the limit order or you are placing the market order or you placing the stop order you have to give input only for a single price right so suppose you are right clicking so what happens when at which price you are right clicking it will take that price by default so it is showing as buy limit so what is the buy limit suppose the price it is showing as 29814.19 and if i right click over here it will show the same price as buy limit. So I hope you have understood that in case of these three options, that is buy limit, buy market or sell stop, we have to enter only one price, but in case of a stop limit. So let me show you in case of a stop limit order, you have to enter two prices, right? So there is a trigger is spread. So one is the limit price and one is the stop price. So there is a trigger spread. So that is based on this setting. So from here, you can set the trigger spread. So there will be spread between these two prices. And you can place the order directly by the right clicking. In the broker setting, you can choose your broker. So these are the brokers we do have. You can also set your iceberg legs. In case you are not able to understand and if you're facing some problem in your charts, you can simply reset default. So all the settings of your chart will be reset. Thank you guys.